going to bring you along on a light box, solar powered light box that I'm building. It's going to be powered by a 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. I've got some LED lights, red and white for the sides. You can see I've already got it marked out here. The bottom four outside holes are going to be one side red, one side white. The middle is going to be a simple bulkhead on off switch in line positive. On the top of one side, we'll have a on off and a master DC switch. The on off are going to power, are going to switch on these 60 watt LEDs. I've got the wiring harness for that. I'm going to cannibalize this and just use what I need out of it. But I am going to use that relay and maybe the inline fuse. The lights, I didn't like the, the mounting system that the lights came with. So I came up with this different one. I bought this different one. They are going to mount on either right here or right here. It's probably going to be right there. Box is a 1430. I'm going to power it with an MPPT solar charger. The Anderson plug that's right here. It's a bulkhead Anderson plug. The bottom will be in solar in and the top will be power out. I'm going to also power the lights on my flat bottom aluminum boat with this box. And then I'm putting a just standard 12 volt DC plug. A couple tools I'm using. I'm about to make my holes. And I figured I'd bring you guys along. That piece of Lexan on the bottom is going to be the bottom and top mm, what would, mounting, mounting platform for the battery. I haven't quite visualized how I'm going to get that done, but that's my game plan. I'll bring you back when I've got some holes drilled. Just finished drilling my holes. The right side is where the positive terminal is. So I made it closer to the switch. If you look, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually narrower at the at this side of the case. And then inside the case, it's, it's thicker. And that's because I used one of these step bits and it works out perfect for the the little switch because there's a step down inside this switch. That'll focus right, right there. So it worked out, that was 7 16 and then, and then uh, the size below that. So it worked out great if you went almost all the way through from the outside and then from the inside drilled out to your, your desired depth and that gives you a little bit of a step so it fits in there perfect. I'm trying to make this case as waterproof as possible. I'll clean it up a little bit. And then inside there are these ridges, structural ridges, and I just took my knife and just whittled that down a little bit. I got a little chingasa there. I'm gonna try to hide that. And then if anybody is wondering, a Pelican case or this particular Pelican case, which is the 1430, is one about one quarter. I'm gonna put some lights in it. Here's the power side. I put the red over here so that if I had to hook up power at night, it was all easily accessible and the, no one's night vision got ruined. And then the white side with the switches. I'm going to have to seal each one of these with a little bit of silicone or whatnot. It all looks really good. Now I'm gonna do the lights on the top.
Install the top lights, side lights, one 12 volt, one Anderson plug, top and bottom, with a switch, push button, push on, push off. Same over here, got white light instead, push on, push off. My master DC kill and on. And then this is a push on, push off, stainless, waterproof. Uh, switch that will be for the top lights I'm at a little bit of a standstill right now the to bring the cable through the top I bought these waterproof bulkhead they're called glands well the bottom part of it that will actually go through the case is not long enough. So I need to search those out. And then I'm going to silicone. So these lights are actually two piece. The middle, the light part comes out of the outer ring. I'm going to glue the outer ring onto the case and then I'll be able to change these lights as I need. I can't push that with the weight with no weight in it. So I'll bring you back when I get a few more parts. I can't remember where I left off but I'm about to start mounting a few items on the box and then I also figured out how I'm going to secure the battery in so i figured i'd make an update video and then i can start working from here how i'm going to mount the battery is i've taken two pieces of lexan i should have gotten thicker gauge i might later on but for right now it's fine i put some eye bolts through there put some cap nuts on the bottom and then i bolted it through these are nice and steady and secure and then the top i made some holes for the positive and negative, and then quarter inch holes that, that are going to accept these battery tie downs. In order to get these to stay, I'm going to use some big heavy duty shrink wrap and then put the, the, the battery tie down in there and then shrink it. That should hold well. This is my fuse block. This is the blue C with the negative bus bar. I've, I have three of these now, I, lo I love them. Put some double-sided tape. That's going to stick right onto the top there. So I tested each one of the lights, the four reds and the four whites. I took the grommets off and those slide in easily. And I'm going to use some gasket maker here, ultra black gasket maker to um, glue these in, I guess. And then I'll be able to put the lights in and out. I have extra lights, so in case something does burn out, I'll be able to replace it. They've, they slide in and out pretty easily. For mounting this, I forgot, for mounting this piece of Lexan down, there are two, let's see if this is gonna show up here. Inside there, you can see, yeah, for the roto molding process, there are two lugs. I drilled into those, and that's how I'm going to, each one, of each side is going to have a little, I think those are half inch wood screws. And I also took one of those waterproof gasket washers on the top and on the bottom. And then I got nylock nuts that will fit perfectly and tighten down so that these should be able to swivel. I did reorder my pass through. Oh, what were those called? glands but i don't like the ones that they sent me so i'm still working on 
on the glands. And I'm going to assemble pretty much everything will be assembled and then I have to do the final wiring and I'll bring you back then. Thank you. Going to do my final assembly now. I have all of my wiring harnesses made, measured and crimped. I've claimed all the surfaces with a alcohol prep pad. So I'll make good contact from left to right here. I've got my 12 volt uh, pigtail. I've got a, another 12 volt pigtail. One will be to the 12 volt um, cigarette lighter. And then this one will be to the top of the Anderson pass-through plug. My MPPT, that will mount to the left side of the battery with some double-sided tape. I'll have the Anderson plug, black and white Anderson plug, will hook to this pigtail. That will go straight to the battery so that I'm charging straight to the battery. That will be the only accessory that won't go through my DC on off switch. I've shortened and crimped and that's my, my wiring harness for the big lights. These are all my power cables. I've mounted the fuse block to the Lexan. I covered the edges just with some Gorilla Tape for protection of the wires, any kind of rattling. The box on the right side here are four white lights. The middle switch turns those on. Everything's waterproof. The chrome push button will be for the top, the top LED lights. And then this is my master on, 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 off. All that's wired, paralleled, and then switch for the positive and then the negative is just straight out. I use 12 gauge wire. On the left side, I've wired the same for the lights. That's got four red lights, same switch. I've got a 12 volt accessory and then an Anderson pole, top and bottom from PowerWorks. The battery's a 50 amp hour. I, inst I taped some Reflectix on the front and the back, and that makes it squeeze in here perfectly. And then with the battery hookups, got it to an eye bolt, and then I put some shrink wrap around it, wire protector, and then up. It's very, very secure. And I think it's going to look sharp. I also added some power poles on the back here. 3 8 inch, so nice, big, heavy battery terminals. I got the right size glands. Most glands on Amazon have got short threads for the pass-through for the bulkhead. So you have to look for long shanked uh, power glands. We'll see how bright these lights are. I haven't tried them yet. The bottoms will swivel and then move up and down. Everything has been waterproofed, recessed, and as tight as can be. I'm really happy with how the build turned out. It's taken me, all the videos that you're watching are over a month, collecting pieces and trying to figure out how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna do my file on a wire. I'll bring you back to show you the final product and then a demonstration at the very end. You are looking at the final rendition of the light power box that I've built. I had to switch out the LED switch for the top to a 10 amp. Power on and then to a 10 amp. So you've got the lights on top, very, very bright. This switch is backlit when it's on. I'm not incredibly happy about that. I don't like the unnecessary draw, but it will work. It was the only 10 amp switch that I could find that was flush, waterproof, and 
was the style that I was looking for. Here are the white lights on the sign. And then here is your red lights. So here's the wire for the relay, positive and negative for the relay. This is completely unnecessary, but it doesn't seem to interfere when I'm opening and closing, so I'm going to leave it in. Here is the, the harness for the MPPT. All of the main power lines, positive and negative, going to the switch and then also to the power poles. This is eight gauge, Windy Nation, copper, and then everything else. I used 12 gauge. It was the landscaping two by wire. One thing that I didn't mention earlier, I installed a Victron smart battery sense monitor. I have that being ran by a two amp fuse. It's part of the app. It, uh, same app that your shunt and your, or my shunt and my DC to DC charger works with. And it just shows you current voltage and then also temperature in Celsius. I used some of these zip tie lugs for wire management. I like it, it's nice and clean. The way that the battery is mounted, I can turn this completely upside down. It shuts nice. I realized that I didn't show you the washers that I, the waterproof washers that I had talked about and had, had installed. Those are on the top and the bottom of these bolts going through. Got a little neoprene gasket on the bottom. Also, I am including a A and C USB charger. This is a fairly decent one. It's metal and I don't know. I've never used it, but it seemed to have good reviews. Also, I will be putting an inline fuse or one of these fuses to the positive terminal when I use it in my boat or for my boat. I've got a couple of appliances here to show you. This is a water system that I built for um, off-grid use, camping, and otherwise. It's three-stage water filter, actually four-stage because that's a park, uh, particulate filter, 40-gauge um, mesh, and then you can put any kind of filters you want inside of here. And then this is a DC ballast UV filter. It will do 2.2 gallons a minute. I've got all the accoutrements in here to completely rewire, double everything, triple triple uh, bulbs, and the metal, or the, not metal, sorry, the glass tubes that go around it. This system is also set up for on-demand water. So your three-way switch, it can go, anyways, I can show you, I can make a video on this but the three-way switch can bypass the filter and then just put water out for camping on demand. So here it is. If you remember, the bottom is your MPPT and then your top is your power on this box. So I will plug her on in. 
I can't really see what I'm doing here. There we go. And then that's the, the pump working. And then here is your UV filter. Hold on, let me push this in better. Excuse the camera work. I'm not a tripod man. And then it's running. So, and then also I've got a smaller 12 volt fridge. The battery on top is just to show that this Apicool is not powered on its own. And then I'll just plug it in with a 12 volt. And then that's, that's gonna run. You can see 13.1 volts. So it's, it's multifarious. It's got a lot of different functions and it was fun to build. And I appreciate you guys checking it out. Adios. It's a quick demonstration of the light box. Those are the top led lights. Each one of those are 60 Watts. 120 watt total. I ran this at the house for four hours and used a quarter of a volt. I'll do the white lights on the side. Obviously a lot, not nearly as bright, but casts a pretty good light. Each side of the wash, I'm in the middle of the wash and it's probably about 35 to 40 yards. That's that's definitely 40 yards. The other side might be 30. I'll pick up. Really good light. I'll do the red light next. The red light, I think, is going to be pretty valuable for camping. And I'll show you the top light again. There is one spot. That's every bit of 120 yards, probably. Pretty powerful. All right. Thanks for checking it out. Adios.